Okay. <laughs> we are live. We're live. The Wi-Fi is good. Everything is stable. The Wi-Fi's are good. All right, everyone. Welcome to episode four of Drink with Devs. We've come so far in such a little time. I can't believe we're already on our fourth month. I know a month. July is just blown by. Um, if you don't know what this is, it is an interview show that I host, Dan Hill, and I interview a dev here at the studio, Eastside Games. We make a lovely game called Pot Farm and mm -hmm. Pot Farm Grassroots mm -hmm. and other games as well, but mostly the, the Pot Farms. Yeah. Um, today I am interviewing Daniel Blumstone, who is a designer here it's true. at Eastside Games Studios, and he is here on popular demand. Really, people were asking about you. Yeah. They wanted you here. I was like, when are you going to have Daniel? Mm, glad to be here. When are you going to have Daniel? It's exciting. Fine. Daniel, 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 Daniel. So I let it happen. <laughs> um, we're trying new stuff with the mics, so hopefully it sounds better this time. I'm slowly moving it closer and closer to the table. Um, how are you today? Good. Yeah, yeah, real good. Ready for a nice cold bevy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm super ready. Do you have a lighter to open this bad boy up? Always have a lighter. Do um, you know it's National Refreshment Day today? Uh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. These national nice. holidays are getting a little, a little crazy. A little There's so many of them. I wish there was one every day. Everyone should be a staff, too. I'll just talk to HR, tell them I need National Refreshment Day off. Gotta really enjoy those refreshments. It's my deep, deep, deep belief at the core of my being that I need to have National Refreshment Day off. Can you see my years of bartending experience coming in now? Yeah. Whoa, it you must Run that after hours venue in his free time. Oh, look at that little plug for your little business. <laughs> Everyone, come to my club. Fly <laughs> <laughs> to Vancouver, it's worth it. <laughs> um, cheers to Popcorn. So, this is actually a good beer for Stephanie. They're from Gibson's here in BC. That's my hometown. Yeah. So, I'm Chico's. I know that. Are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we should start some questions here. Sure. Okay. Uh, start one off easy for you. Knock, knock. Who's there? I asked the question, so I'll just show it anyway. Ah. Almost. You got got. Uh, well, I caught myself before I said any, any foul language. <laughs> <laughs> just let it, let it all out, man. You don't need a filter here. You can fucking swear and shit. <laughs> <laughs> just cut off the air immediately. <laughs> um, so, what do you do here at Eastside Games? I'm a junior designer um, on Pop Farm. I started uh, in community with you as you know, well before you. You're only a junior, so wise. Yeah, only a junior. Gotta gotta earn those titles. Yeah. Don't just come don't just come for, with time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I I design the assets. I mean, like I don't picking the assets as far as what they're gonna be like which which bikes we're gonna have is like a, a collaborative effort between the art team and mm -hmm. community and everyone involved in the project gets a say in that if they're into it sometimes like uh, programmers don't don't feel that they have the time to attend those meetings uh, which is totally fair uh, but yeah deciding like what stuff's gonna output how fast it's gonna output what you're gonna harvest how much you're gonna harvest um, so you get to decide how everything works yeah. The inner workings of a machine. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's probably probably good right now. It's exciting. People people would love to hear about that, I'm sure. You get tons of questions when you go live on Twitch. And you can answer them all with passion. Yeah, when I first like when I first went into game design, like started pursuing it, I never I mean, never in my life have I been like particularly good at math. And my job is essentially balancing very complex formulas across multiple spreadsheets. Like I just don't do... tell them you're not good at math. Then no, I'm good at math. I just <laughs> don't enjoy it. I mean, I didn't do well in like high school math, but I didn't really attend very many of my classes in high school. Mm -hmm. um, high school doesn't count. No, high school doesn't count. And I taught myself everything I needed to learn. Um, it's just it was just sort of shocking to me when I had like seen game design as this like. I mean, it's a very creative job for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but growing up in a house with like professional artists as a as a mother, 
I didn't understand how technical creative jobs are sometimes. Um, We're gonna get personal here. Tell, you, tell me about your mother. My mother. Yeah. Um, yet. <laughs> Kids really young, <laughs> away from the states. <laughs> this is about your family. Um, Remember, you at home, we lovely viewers, can ask questions of Daniel Bunstone here. Mm -hmm. Keep them about himself more than the game, because we're here to get to know Daniel. Um, we he can has, talk about the game on Twitch. I was going to say, he Facebook. shows up on Twitch and Facebook all the time, and he'll answer questions there. But this is just an intimate little session where we get to know him yeah. as a human being. Yep. Yeah. I think our, think our chemistry is running, running strong here. We can tell how good friends we are. That we hang out like on the weekends and stuff. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. It's private. Oh, I, I don't know. This I time. don't drink. Um, yeah. So you were talking about schooling and getting into the game industry. How did you break into it in the end? Uh, and get into this industry. I mean, so I, like I started working really young, like fourteen. The, on my fourteenth birthday, I got my first job. It was at McDonald's, the only place nice. that would hire me. Um, you really stepped down from that. Pinnacle, you said. The high pinnacle, yeah. yeah. Really miss being the, the drive through attendee. Um, and yeah, I worked a lot of labor jobs, a lot of bar jobs and stuff. And my one, I had one friend that, I, that I've known since I was like 14 years old or something. And when we graduated high school, he immediately moved to Vancouver, went to game design school, got involved in the industry, and then like three or four years later, he just started harassing me like all the time. As he friends went, do. Moved to Vancouver, started in the games industry. Like I lived in this uh, province called Alberta, which is like the oil boom. It's like all, it's a lot of labor jobs, a lot, like a lot of money being like 17 yeah. years old, 16 years old and making like 30, $40 an hour. Starting wage is like pretty addictive. Like a lot of people I know ended up with houses and he was just like, I know you're not happy. I know you don't like Alberta. I know you don't like your job. Like come to Vancouver, work in games, mm -hmm. work in games. I swear you're gonna love it. Here's like pictures of me having fun at work. Here's like pictures of everything. And yeah, I cracked. I came to Vancouver like four years ago now, four years ago, August 1st. And yeah, I went to school, Vancouver Film School for game design. Uh, partway through my schooling, I found a a pot farm poster, which was like sort of hidden away, because the school has posters for games that people, alumni they call them, mm -hmm. people who graduated the program, um, <laughs> that like they have posters for all the games they've worked on, and the pot farm one's sort of like hidden away in this weird There's hallway, because no like, we don't There's, want everyone to like watch this. One of our graduates scene. is working on a pot game, like we'll just hide this in this dark corner over here. Yeah, I saw it and I was like, is that? game actually about weed like i've been playing <laughs> weed games in school and getting in trouble for doing it for like months at that point <laughs> and i went back i was in like this boring lecture about 3d modeling faces and i instead of paying any attention to the lecture the teacher signed on to pot farm played it for like three and a half hours straight my first session and then was like i'm gonna work I'm gonna work on this game. I'm gonna hunt down employees of Eastside Games and make friends with them. I'm gonna get into the studio, and this is like the project and people yeah. that I want to work on. Yeah, it was. We interviewed at the same time, and you got the job before me. I did. That was my fourth interview, though. Like, You'll I always interviewed be my rival for because the of six that. months. Yeah. Forever. That's true. We're rivals in many ways. Um, I hate to interrupt you, but I'm yeah, sure there no. are questions from the fans. Let's hear it. I would like sure. to know about you. Yes, there are some questions. Um, Simon wants to know, what's your favorite dinosaur? Oh, my favorite dinosaur is the Velociraptor. I love how they hunted packs. They're like the most social of all the dinosaurs. They all rely on each other and they work together. They're like a perfectly tuned Overwatch team. Pre-Overwatch <laughs> era. <laughs> it all comes back to Overwatch. All Everything the time. does. Every time. <laughs> Uh, Debbie wants to know what you think about co-hosting with Dank on Twitch, and if you like it, if you want to be his weekly co-host. You hate it. You um, hate spending time with me. I hate me. spending time with Dank. He was supposed to help me move, and he just blew me off, and now we're fucking enemies. <laughs> Sorry, I have a camping trip to go on. It's a lot more exciting than moving. Yeah, I get it. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, man. 
yeah, co-hosting on Twitch is super fun. I really enjoy it. I love being able to talk to the fans. I love seeing reactions to things that I've worked on where I've spent like a week on something and I'm like, oh, I hope they're gonna like it. How are they gonna react? And then I can like directly have that, that face-to-face feel. Yeah. yeah, it's always fun having you on. I like to switch it up between you and each other, kind of <laughs> bounce back and forth. Yeah, I mean, then there's some, some weeks where I feel like my workload is so heavy that I, I can't dedicate that time to Twitch. Um, but I enjoy it. I enjoy it when I do. I get the chance. So, any other questions? Uh, well, Deborah says you both look nice. Uh, the tablecloth, not so much. Yeah, I really need to figure something out here. This tablecloth is rough. We should go to dress up after work. We should tomorrow. get some fabric. Tomorrow, probably. Tomorrow would be bad. Because, yeah, we can get nice fabric. Right? Whatever. That's not. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have a question for you. Yeah. Out of all the pop farm assets that you have worked on since becoming a junior designer, what has been your favorite thing that you've made? I mean, you've been doing the design gig for a few months now. I'm just asking your mother what her favorite child is. I don't want to oh, that's easy. It's always the assets. Assets. <laughs> You're just saying that because you're <laughs> <the youngest. laughs> Yes, that is true. Um, I'd say it's more like the middle child. <laughs> My favorite asset that I've worked on, I mean, I really enjoyed the Vegas theme a lot, the like, the neon cowboy, when I made that asset that, it's like, it's a crate repeater, as I'm sure the pop farm players know, that crate was the first crate that I balanced myself, and like balancing crates is uh, one of the more complex design tasks. The, the most complex design task is the progressive point crates, which is why everyone wants yeah, them. Yeah, they're very tricky things. Oh that one, so. man, that's like 30 hours of work. Like, that is almost a whole week of my time just for that asset. But that, that neon stoner um, cowboy crate, I forgot ultimately what we landed on the name for it was, but uh, yeah, I worked a long time on that. I was super nervous that people weren't gonna get it. It's really hard to make a large asset, like it's like a two by three, like if if I, wanna, if I want six tiles of your farm, I gotta give you value for it. Yeah. Um, and I was super nervous about it. It was only like a mid-level reward. It wasn't a, a top level reward and it actually went over fairly well. I like Oh, I haven't heard any complaints about it. I was super proud of that one. I like the way it looks. That's the art, though. <laughs> it's the art. I can keep them based on how they look, but that's not... I feel like every stream we do is impressive by science. No matter... <laughs> so it's true. We can't go 20 minutes away here in this island in this office. It's true. It's very true. Um, I ask this of everyone, but what is your favorite thing about working at East Side Games? Oh, probably the people. I mean, I've watched all the other interviews. I know everyone says the people. Yeah. So I'm probably sick of hearing about it. I mean, I like that we get to work on Wii games. That's, That's cool. also really cool. Um, but yeah, the people for sure. I love everyone that I work with. We're like a nice big family. Everyone's super happy and supportive. And it's really, really great. Yeah, people are pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe Not all here. people. There's I a lot of people, people here outside of work. Outside of work. So I mean, like, what people as a whole telling me that you don't like me? Is that where you're going with this? That, yeah, that's for sure. Why would you have to do this on here? Sorry, Alright, we'll get through it. Um, any more questions from the fans? Um, it was perfect timing because someone actually had a question about, like, what was your favorite thing to work on? So, yeah. as soon as they had asked that, you had asked that. So, it was just, mm. just perfect. I already, I already got it for you. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, there's actually another one. Uh, do you play any of these games? Is it a list of games or the games that we work on at the studio? Um, I would think they would be the ones that we work on here. Yeah, I, I play all of the games that we work on at different times. I play Pop Farm a lot. Everything that comes out, I've played at least twice by the time it gets into the hands of our fans and I play all the content as it releases again to be a part of what's going on with the community. 
well it's happening i was at one point very engaged with grassroots now i sort of check in here and there play the carbon contest a bit i'm like on and off with that um do we have that's live right now? I don't play Munchie Farm anymore. Nope. I still have Kitty Clicker and High Profits installed, yeah. but I check into those games like once a week or something. We got some stuff in the pipeline coming out that's gonna oh, be fun to play yeah, with. For sure, that we're not allowed to talk about. No, <laughs> but I definitely need to so. find some of that stuff too. Yeah. Um, any other questions, Lauren? Um, someone wanted to know how old you were earlier. How old I am? 38. 38. No, I am 26 years old. I'm sure I was better at math and I could do it in days. That would be sick. But Just to confuse everyone. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Of our spreadsheets and stuff have the timers for stuff done in minutes. <laughs> like Why do they do like that? six hour repeaters that are balanced to the minute. I'm like, Why? <laughs> Don't like this. <laughs> This classic, I like it. Um, I got asked this question today, actually, and I liked it. <laughs> so I'm gonna pass it, pass it forward to you. Um, imagine this: you are the captain of a pirate ship. Okay. You've just got a lot of treasure, <laughs> and you have to decide how to divvy it up amongst your crew, with you coming out on top with the most gold because you're the captain. But if more than half the crew disagree with you, they're gonna kill you. How do you divvy up the gold? Just take the one gold extra that I need to take the top. What? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's a cheating way out of it. You want, you want to come on top, you're like a pirate captain. You want to have the most. Dank and I have had a lot of conversations about this, about uh, a certain- <laughs> About pirate no, 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 about pirates. <laughs> there, is, there is an animated television show from Japan based on a comic book also from Japan. They call it manga out there. Manga? Manga. <laughs> Um, One Piece. I'm a big, I'm a big One Piece man. I've spent, you know, five, six hundred hours in the One Piece universe, which is all about so many hours. pirates, and we follow Pirate King Luffy, who takes over, and he is the most socialist Pirate King of all the pirates, and he has the happiest crew, and they work together, and they become the best. I don't need the most gold. I don't really care about money in life. I'm so terrible. I love it. I am. <laughs> Try. Don't fictionalize me as a pirate king and then box me in to the pirate king you want me to be. I'll be whatever kind of pirate king I want. And I'm taking the, the one extra gold even across the group. Okay, cool. I guess you're a pirate. For the, for, the, for the deck swabbers. Like, whoever's on the bottom level. You're going to get bonuses the bonus. at the bottom level? Yeah, yeah. You don't think the other pirates are going to be upset about that? Yes, I do. I do think they are, you're right, but I don't think that they deserve to be upset about it because they have easier jobs and they get other benefits and they'll all be fine. Other benefits. Trust me. They get good health care. Good pirates, yeah, have good health care. Christmas holidays. <laughs> yep. Great days, stats. <laughs> so if you're on a really good pirate ship, I'm into it. Um, do we have any other questions rolling in? Um, yeah, someone wanted to know what you are reading currently, and then there's another question. What's it like working on a chronic quest pack for Pop Farm? Um, okay, we'll do reading first. I know you buy lots of books. I, yeah. <laughs> oh god, I don't know if you're moving right now, I can move the day after tomorrow. I counted my books as I packed them up, and I thrifted 132 and packed like 370 or something dumb. Um, the last like book that I was reading is Roku Mirakami's second novel, which is not Hard Boiled Wonderland, it's called Sheep Chase or something. Away. No, it's, it's about sheep. Um, <laughs> it's the whole novel about sheep. Let's not. It's about. It's I'm not gonna get into the it's plot. A, it's near Tommy. It's book. gonna be really weird. I read a lot of weird stuff. I like Tom Robbins a lot. Kurt Vonnegut's probably my favorite author. I read a lot of Philip K. Dick. A lot of old like Isaac Asimov. Weird stoner shit is mostly what I read. Yeah. Um, mostly comics lately because I'm lazy. Uh, the other one was, what's it like working on a Chronic Quest pack on Pot Farm? 
quest, quest packs are a lot of fun. I mean, it's so much different from working on a timed quest line because we're trying to create content that can be played over a period of months or years um, to keep fans engaged and give them something to work towards, whereas timed, timed quests you get either seven days or three days for so the design principles behind them are are quite different the the way they're built from the ground up is totally different um but it's also frustrating because you want to give people something that they're really going to like like i know there was there was a big point of friction with the old gods quest pack which that wasn't me i didn't work on that um <laughs> Fine, it's what worked on. It's all me. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I love that quest pack, and I thought the design behind it was great. Like we talked design principles, we decided what we wanted to do with it and how we wanted to do it. But the prize for it, like the Cthulhu Big Pig, was so strong that the fans were frustrated that they couldn't have it right away. Like they bought the quest pack and they were like. They're, they're very, a lot of our players are very used to having, to accomplishing content so quick, even the week-long content, some of the players finish in 20, 30 minutes, so we had thought that that would be like a nice, slow-burning quest pack, they would like, work their way through it, sometime around Halloween, we would feature some of the plants in it, and they'd be able to make big progress at that time, but they really pushed us for like, repeaters, and, mm -hmm. um, it's a challenge, it's an interesting challenge, I love, trying anything on design that's outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, no risk can be really rewarding. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, any other questions before we wrap this up? It's been about 20 minutes. Uh, no, no, they have, none have rolled in recently since those ones, so. All right, is there anything you want to say as a final word? No. No? no. Your time to shine, Daniel. Well, I talk to the fans all the time. I don't know. Have a YouTube channel to promote. Do you think? Daniel Blumstone's channel 420. Find me, find me on, uh, what are they called? Battle.net. The IP Diva 420. The IP Diva 420, yeah. Give a PlayStation 4, play Overwatch with me. I'm very high level of play the wall. It's an understatement. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, great show. Um, tune in next week. Uh, it's going to be on Thursday at 2.20 PT as per usual. I have a guest that is 99% confirmed that's been here since the beginning in Eastside Games, and I think it's going to be really awesome. I'm so pumped. It's going to be some OG, OG stuff going on there. It's going to be awesome, I think. Oh, I like really sitting in the interview came about OG Pop Farm like, as often as I can. Yeah. You just have a like, hey, remember this theme? Remember that happened? Three years ago? Yeah. I heard somebody on on Facebook telling me about this old time in the game. Can you can you expand on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be super fun. Mm -hmm. I'm really pumped for that. Tune in, tune in. It's gonna be good. Maybe I'll buy a new set of clothes because these are all way too tight. And yeah, new clothes, new table, table off. Off. Those That's are the big game. You, you gotta get a different tie. You have the same tie on every time. I know. I yeah. Taught Dan how to tie a tie, guys. He didn't know how. Rita know. had commented on your outfit. Yeah, you need to get a new outfit. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I work on the pinks. Um, mostly work on the creases and the shirt and the tablecloth. It's just a new shirt. Um, <laughs> just a shirt that fits. Yes. It's probably going to be best. Get a bow tie. Everyone, you know what? This is my, this is my goddamn show. <laughs> I'm going to run it how I please. Bow tie? Right? Do you want a bow tie? I have like five bow ties. ties. I'll yeah. bring you a bow tie next week. Um, and on that note, on that nice, quiet <laughs> note, goodbye. The pop farm. Pop farm.